Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very good evening and welcome to another edition of Health Matters. We so in the blessed month of Rabil Awal, and so we celebrate our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with tonight's program, Prophetic Medicine. You can interac interact with us via our WhatsApp and uh, you can call in live with our experts in studio. Let's introduce them, Professor Bika, Professor Rashid Bika, the founder of Ibn Sina Institute of Tib, as well as co-author of Medicine of the Prophet, as we have the books in front of us. And uh, Asalaamu Alaikum and welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. It's on a show. pleasure having you here with us. And our in studio medical expert from the IMA, Dr. Yakub. Shukran so much uh, for joining us. We know you've had a busy year and still ongoing, so we really appreciate your time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So, if we would like to start the show in a way, alhamdulillah, with uh, the understanding that prophetic medicine is something that goes way, way back. And Dr. Yakub, I'd like to leave that floor to you. Well, obviously, it's the foundations are lying with the greatest human being that ever lived, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who through many of his teachings uh, on a broad, complete, comprehensive scale, he taught us every facet of life. Mm. And health was not left out at any point. And he gave very sound advice in terms of behavioral uh, from our behavioral habits mm -hmm. uh, in terms of preventative medicine and then also when people got sick he spoke about whatever was going to have healing properties and there were many that are quoted both in Quran and Hadith we, we know about honey from the Quran there's olive oil uh, there's dates mm -hmm. and so there's a whole range and Prophet Pekka obviously will elaborate on that and then the Prophet himself when he was ill there was some healing done on himself and then he himself promoted healing and then there were other instances when uh, there were healing being practiced by his companions where he sanctioned it by not uh, prohibiting it. Mm. So it's a whole range, but the main thing is the Prophet Wasallam, so. which is today what we always look at when we look at non-communicable diseases is prevention is better than cure or lifestyle. And if we go back into his teachings, the foundations have been laid many, many years ago. Shukran, uh, Dr. Yakub, and understanding the father of Tib, we are uh, really honored to have you in our studios, uh, Prof. Pika. Tell us a bit about Ibn Sina Institute of Tib. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I established the institute in 1997 for, the promoting, for promoting the practice and training of Tib in South Africa. And alhamdulillah, over the years, we've done really, really well. Mm. If, if people want to know more about the Institute, go, go onto the website and you'll see all the different activities that we're doing. So, 1970, 1997, 1997 it's yeah. been a long time and a long journey. Yeah. Um, alhamdulillah, what made you want to explore the medicine of the prophets? Mm. You know, um, obviously, uh, studying tip mm. or the principles of tip. This, and then also, you know, during the period of, of, of studying what is tip and how it works and all mm -hmm. the different components of the philosophical principles, etc., etc. And then I came across the books of uh, even Tayyum Josiah, mm -hmm. or Matthew of the Prophet, and I realized that all the, the philosophical principles of tip medicine, remember, tip medicine is not new. It started with Hippocrates, Galen, even Sina, and all the Muslim contribution for the seven, eight hundred years. Mm. Okay, and and by looking at at medicine of the Prophet, I realized that Tib medicine, or rather uh, Islamic medicine or prophetic medicine, is actually the same principles of Tib medicine or or Greek medicine. Mm. So this this made me realize, holy, this is not only a science of medicine. There's a spiritual element to it. Mm. I mean, this is, yeah. and remember, everything from the Prophet Allah so. is direct inspiration and guidance from Allah SWT. So that made me, see, that made me really, really excited about that we're not only practicing medicine, mm. but as a Muslim, we are reviving Islamic medicine, prophetic medicine, alhamdulillah. So, Dr. Yakub, if I could ask you to come in there and, and s sort of make us understand as Muslims, I mean, you, you are a practicing doctor in, you know, modern medicine, but still we live the life or we try to live the life of the Prophet, which is Sunnah, in every day. What would you say we need to include that um, when it comes to medicine? How do we include that? So, actually, the Sunnah is not excluded from modern medicine. Mm. Because Prophet said, for every disease there's a cure. 
he didn't specify that that cure is going to be lying in Western medicine. Mm -hmm. Neither did he specify it's lying in any medicine. He said, you find the cure. Mm -hmm. So today, although we practice the so-called Western medicine, and there are alternative modalities of treatment and mm -hmm. supplementary. So we have Ayurvedic medicine, you've got the allied medicine disciplines, there's a whole society in this country, and Professor Bika will tell us about that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is in keeping with the Sunnah. The Prophet Sallallahu yes. Alaihi teaching was basically you go out and you look for the cure, you look for healing, and as I mentioned in the introduction, there's pre prevention and then there's curative. Mm. And again, after that, there's rehabilitation. And everything is linked. Mm. So it's a complete intertwined thing. So his sunnah, if we practice medicine properly and if we think about how we're doing things, we take the correct niya in trying to obviously treat patients, mm. and we know healing comes from the Quran and from the Prophet, uh, from Allah's uh, will, then we are practicing the sunnah. Yeah. So, so uh, Prof, just, you know, elaborate and explain a little bit more what Tib an nabawi the prophetic medicine, is really mm -hmm. all about. I've got a uh, definition of Tib an nabawi mm -hmm. which you know, I'd like to read, and hopefully it'll go on to the slide. Tib an nabawi refers to the words and the actions of the Prophet mm -hmm. with reference to disease, the treatment of disease, and the care of patients. Mm -hmm. It also refers to, firstly, the actual words of the Prophet وسلم, on medical matters, medical treatment practiced by others on the Prophet, medical treatment practiced by the Prophet وسلم, on himself and others, medical treatment observed by the Prophet with no objections, and medical procedure that the Prophet heard or knew about and did not prohibit. It also includes guidance on physical and mental health. It covers preventative medicine, curative medicine, mental well-being, spiritual cures such as rukia, and medical and surgical treatments. It seeks to integrate body, mind, and soul in the quest for optimum health. I mean, if you look at this definition, it, it encompasses the whole aspect of medicine, from theory to practice, as, as in the works of Ibn Sina, Hippocrates, and, and Galen. Let's elaborate on, on that term, preventative medicine. What does that mean? Preventive, uh, preventative medicine, I mean, again, yeah, you know, is, 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 is a fundamental. I mean, I'll just quote uh, Ibn Sina's definition of medicine. Uh, Ibn Sina's definition of medicine states it is a science of, of medicine that, that is there to, 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 uh, to address both health promotion and illness management. Mm. Now, with due respect, you know, when it comes to Western medicine, most of the aspect is on treatment. Mm. Whereas, it's, it's even seen as general of medicine, or his definition, clearly highlights equal emphasis on both prevention and treatment, mm. but with a focus on, on prevention. And of course, this is one of the strengths of uh, TIP, or, or United TIP, or Greco-Arab medicine. It doesn't matter what name you call it. Mm. And so interestingly, you know, over the last 10 years, so many different parts of the world, different, different countries, nationalities, are, are almost taking claim to this medicine. Mm. In, uh, in uh, Iran, they call it Persian medicine. Mm. In Turkey, they're calling it Anatolian medicine. I just picked up a document from Europe calling it a Western traditional medicine. Mm. So suddenly the whole world is now realizing this is the original source from Hippocrates, Galen, and, and Ibn Sina. And uh, inshallah, we're hopeful. Tib always believes in an integrative approach. Mm. Take the best of the technology of today with the philosophy of yesterday, and you'll have a perfect system. Inshallah. Dr. Yaqub, uh, shukran, Prof. Uh, you know, when you visit the doctor and you go, whether it's a flu or whatever, but vitamin B shot, you actually appreciate when the doctor says, you know, look after yourself, don't forget to, you know, rest or don't forget to, you know, drink lots of water. All those additions, does that also talk to preventative medicine? Yes, in a way, obviously, mm. because now you're coming with an established disease, but then you don't, you want to prevent complications. Mm. So that's the scenario you're showing. But again, we go to the Hadith of the Prophet, so a simple thing like if you look at gastrointestinal diseases, I mean, he spoke about the 
the, the vessel, the mm -hmm. stomach, that, you know, you could be doing so much harm by filling it. But if you really can't control yourself, then use the guideline mm -hmm. of one third yeah. solid, one third water and one third air. And if you look at today, the amount of reflux disease that we have, overeating, obesity, mm -hmm. I mean, just applying a simple principle, we've given you a guideline, and all from the source, from his words, his, as Prof has said, that he taught us things and it's coming directly from his source. Mm -hmm. And today, many, many uh, other disciplines have incorporated that teaching, but obviously they're calling it something else. <laughs> but the, the, the basis is from where, where we're talking about, exactly. from the Prophet yeah. and, and And would you find that, you know, in modern medicine today, there's lots of proofs that has been in existence 1400 years ago? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and more and more we're beginning to see as science and technology is improving, they're finding evidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, many, many years ago, there was an embryologist, uh, Kevin Moore, who described in his embryology book, which we used in, in, in as a text in second-year mm -hmm. medicine, and then he himself, Kenneth Moore, went and saw the, the description of the embryo and the exact detail. Uh, and it was quite shocking to himself when he presented to one of the conferences that actually he then even spoke about the evidence of this in the Quran. That was there already. Yeah. Mashallah. So um, looking at you know mod modern medicine and understanding that uh, the prophetic um, you know, way of living the lifestyle. Um, is it something that, you know, alhamdulillah, we have the beautiful uh, teachings of Tub and you've been around for a very long time. This discipline, how is it appreciated by, by us Muslims and, you know, non-Muslims? I think uh, today, you know, one of the new medicines of the future mm. is lifestyle. Mm. I mean, even in Western medicine, there's so much you know, because of obesity, mm -hmm. because of all the diseases of lifestyle, hypertension, diabetes, etc. Mm -hmm. Today, a lot of discussion is on, on the role of lifestyle in, a, in obviously health promotion. Yeah. Of course, the, the, the one difference between TIB and Western medicine is that lifestyle in, in Western medicine is very generic. Mm -hmm. It's a one size fits all. Don't drink, don't smoke, do exercise, etc. Mm -hmm. Whereas in TIB, based on, on the principle from Hippocrates, Humoral theory and temperament from Galen. Lifestyle in tip is is individualized. It's focused. We're all different. We can't have the same lifestyle lifestyle requirements of diet, sleep pattern for, for everybody. So mm -hmm. so that's the difference. But without a doubt, today uh, you know healthcare requirements all over the world, mm -hmm. healthcare challenges all over the world, yeah. recognizes that lifestyle has to become number one priority. And this is the only way the, the cost of healthcare will come down. Inshallah. We'll talk more with our experts. Remember, we are taking your questions and comments and queries live here on Health Matters as we celebrate this beautiful month of her, the uh, Rabiul Awal, the birth of the Prophet, back in a moment.
Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. This is Health Matters. Remember, you can uh, get any of our shows on our YouTube channel. That is uh, ITV Health Matters. Uh, Google it. Over 100 medical shows, social medical, information um, organization. It's all there and uh, you can go back to it and watch it. And uh, that you can do with any of the shows on ITV. We are taking your calls, questions, uh, comments, queries on prophetic medicine this holy month of Rabil Owal as we celebrate the life of the prophet. We have Dr. Yaqub and Professor Bika. Shukran so much to our experts. We have them answering your questions as well on prophetic medicine. We have uh, Medicine of the Prophet co-authored uh, by Professor uh, Bika as well as Dr. Ashraf Dakrad, a beautiful rendition of the life of uh, the medical life of the prophet and, and so much more. So let's uh, quickly understand um, what the events are all about that leads up to the production of uh, this prophetic medicine to Bunabawe. Well, as I mentioned earlier, having um, studied you know, all the principles of Fit, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, being introduced to prophetic medicine, you know, by the books of, of Ibn, Ibn Qayyum, Al Jazeera, and Abdul Rahman Siyuti, I realized that Rothko is the same principles. And um, I was very fortunate that when ITV was launched, mm. uh, uh, I was asked to, to, to produce um, a whole series of, of Medicine of the Prophet, which I did. Indeed, and no. subsequent to, to, to that, we, we actually produced the book as well. And uh, uh, the, the, the purpose of the book mm -hmm. was, you know, whilst, yes, I was involved in the training of, of United States Medicine at, at GWC, but since there were so few doctors around, there's only about 50 or 60 doctors in the country. So then I realized, instead of focusing on the doctors to educate people on, 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 on tip medicine or mm -hmm. tip way, let me rather focus at the consumer level. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the production for ITV on medicine of the prophet and this book is, is, is one of our roots to rather empower consumers to learn, learn about tip and mm -hmm. And hopefully, inshallah, with the emphasis that it has on uh, preventative health and, and health maintenance, this will obviously make a big difference. So alhamdulillah, I think, you know, this is part and parcel of the Institute's main focus. Mm. In fact, for the last 10 years, our main focus has been on empowering people to take responsible for their own health. Yes. And to this, this, uh, to, to this uh, you know, objective, yes, we've got the website there and all the information. And I must also just tell you very briefly, alhamdulillah, we are re-looking at, at, at the website information. Of course, we're going to touch some of it now. Yeah. But to make it very certain, and what is fascinating is the principles of TIP is not rocket science. Mm. It's simple. It's common sense. Right? And, and this is something that, inshallah, over the next three months, mm. you know, our website will be inshallah. redone to, to empower people in a very simplistic way to mm. understand the principles of TIP temperament, humor, lifestyle factors, mm. how illnesses are, are caused in the first place and how treatment should be applied. But most important, take responsibility for your own health. Absolutely. Dr. Yaku, in keeping you... with uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet, as you said, your body is an amanat to you, so look after it. And when we do our anti-smoking campaigns as the IMA, again, we speak about the same thing, mm. that you can't harm yourself So within the same principles. And I just want to add that the uh, Prophet's uh, comment that he's gone to the consumer level, mm. right? So it's not just consumers that are buying his product, but it's the education that he's inculcated as one of his paradigms and, and the focus that he's put into various clinics. Mm. And we have an uh, IMA clinic in Soweto where until recently a uh, prof's full-time educator was present at that. So although the clinic was practicing traditional primary healthcare medicine, mm. allopathic western medicine, it was actually integrated and supplemented together with the Tibbin uh, Nabawi concepts that Prof and his educational material and a dedicated person that was present on site and in many other clinics that you've had uh, in terms of even students from your Western Cape seat that you set them up in clinics in Cape Town to practice this at a real level on the ground. Definitely. 
So, Dr. Jacob, you've, I know you've got some niggling questions and you've got an opportunity of, of having you know, Prof I here with us. I just obviously wanted Prof to give us some examples. So today we got lots of non-communicable diseases and it's, it's a scourge. Uh, diabetes is an epidemic that outstrips everything else. So I don't know if you want to cite one of these chronic diseases, because like you said, Western medicine is like a one recipe for all, don't do this, don't do this. Uh, so much exercise, leave out this food. But in incorporating the principles of Tibet Nabawi and Unani medicine, maybe you can cite an example for us in any condition, What? how would you guys approach it? I think it would be more appropriate for me to, to rather talk about some of the principles. Okay, very good. Okay, and then once we've covered those principles, yeah. and then we can see specifics. Yeah. Yeah, because we have, then we can go to specifics, you know, yeah, that's like right. diabetes, hypertension, etc., etc. Yeah. Okay, you know, because yeah, so all linked to are yeah. the temperament of, of the person, mm -hmm. you know. And so, so I think once we go through to, through the different concepts, yeah. right? okay, okay, and then I, and then we can most certainly talk about it, yeah. inshallah. Is is does your book encompass that? Does it uh, does it allow us to find out more about the temperament? Tell us a bit about the book. Everything. I mean, it's like our, our book has, has, has got different chapters, 20 mm -hmm. different chapters, starting from, again, covering all the different concepts. Mm -hmm. and, also, and of course, the underlying principles are there, which we'll talk about a bit later. Okay. And, uh, but I think uh, maybe, maybe one of the importance of understanding Tibbun Nabawi and more so learning about it. Mm -hmm. Now, there's, there's a beautiful hadith, I mean, a beautiful statement from, from Imam Shafi who says that after the science which distinguishes between what is permissible and what is impermissible, mm -hmm. I know of no other science which is more notable than that of Tib. So in other words, just as it is important to know what is halal, what is halal, halal and haram, or what is permissible, what can't, the next most important knowledge mm -hmm. is to know about medicine or Tib, right? Okay. To remember the word Tip literally means medicine. Mm. And why is it so? Because you can only perform your duty as a Muslim, you can only perform your, your, your duty as a vicegerent on earth mm. if you are healthy. Mm. And health is, 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 is fundamental to doing everything as part of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands. Mm. So without a doubt, this saying of Imam Shafi is so critical. Mm. There's no other knowledge better after knowing you know, you know what is fit, what is right and wrong, then know about health because only when you're healthy you can perform your duties as a wise gerent on earth. Let's talk, let's talk about that health. Um, uh, and I first want to pose it to Dr. Yakub. What, is, what does health mean? Is it physical? Is it mental? Is it spiritual? It's everything um, yeah. that you're what? talking about. So obviously we are born with different components. So when you practice family medicine, mm. and not just a particular speciality, and mm. nothing wrong with specialities, but we're just talking about the principles of family medicine, we talk about the biopsychosocial approach. So you're mm. looking at the biological side, which is the physical ailment and the reason for the patient being ill, then the impact that the context has in which he's living, which mm. will be his social, so whether it's to do with his work or his family situation, the politics in the country, whatever may be affecting him, mm. and then the individual interpretations, we call it the three-stage assessment, will be his thoughts, fears, what he thinks about the disease. So that's basically, and it's covered in Tim Metzen, because earlier Prof quoted the comprehensive definition was covering from the physical, the mental, the spiritual, and then sometimes you will speak to a cardiologist and you will talk about the physical heart. Mm. But when we talk to people that are practicing mm. comprehensive medicine, they will talk about both. Because the spiritual heart will affect the physical heart. And there's no doubt about it. And there's enough evidence for that. So so my question then to you, Doc, before I get to um, Prof, is that so often, you know, I, I talk for myself, when you go to the medical doctor or a specialist, you just kind of feel that disconnect in, in the technical terms. Um, is it sort of, you know, made to be, you know, that's the way modern medicine is, or do they take the person into context of their surroundings and where they come from, as you've mentioned? Well, it depends on your training and your mm. personality and where you're coming from. So if you're going for 
an emergency situation. Yeah. Nobody's going to ask you about what you think about life in general, right? Yes. But the thing, Sam, if you're in the context of a consultation, yes. then we call that a patient-centered approach. Okay. So Western medicine has been criticized rightfully sometimes because it's a very doctor-centered approach. Mm. The doctor says, do this, do this, do this, and it's a very prescriptive approach. Whereas the patient-centered approach which is in keeping with uh, the mm. Prophet of the Prophet Sallallahu is where you look at the person as a whole and what he's presenting as a human being, mm. although his symptom may be a physical one. So let's talk about why we need to learn about prophetic uh, medicine, Prof. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the saying I mentioned mm. earlier on emphasizes that it is extremely important. Mm. And you know, so without a doubt, that, that uh, saying from Imam Shati covers mm. that part, you know. And of course, uh, uh, I, I think that the, you know the wisdom of Ibn al Nabawi is 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 also highlighted and based on the principles of Tib, on the temperamental and the humoral theory. Okay. And, and and I think this is something that 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 is that has been around for thousands of years. Mm. And many and, and interestingly enough, many of our old 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 mm. people remember things about hot, cold, yes, etc., yes, etc. Yes. You know, it, it, was, it was common practice. Mm. In winter, you have soups, right? And when it's hot, you have watermelon. Yes. You know, these simple things which, which people practice for until very recently. Mm. I know that, 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 that my late mother and all the older, older generation, they were quite aware of this. Mm. Come winter, they said, you've got to have your, your, your ginger pack or or, or whatever it is, mm. because if you need to, Keep you inside. need to, to, to put heat into inside, your body to, yeah. to, to obviously avoid, you know, getting a cold. So all of this rationale and wisdom, mm. and and what what I found very fascinating, is looking at the Tibbin Nabawi, mm. and and Alhamdulillah, I was pleased with, with the knowledge of Tib, and interestingly enough. The principles of Tick from Hippocrates Galen and of course Ibn Sina. Mm -hmm. Ibn Sina was born in the year 980, okay? And you know, Papa Stevie 10, 10, 30 or whatever it is. These two books were written about 200 years after that, okay? By Josiah and, and, and Siyuti. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it took them, them a while to, to link the hadith with the philosophy of Tick, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is something which, which I found fascinating. And, 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 and this, of course, highlights the rationale or the wisdom mm -hmm. behind Tibbun Nabiwi. Now, now, I'll just give you uh, uh, one example, which I'm sure they'll put up on the slide, yes. which I'd like to read. The rationale, the wisdom that underpins, underpins prophetic medicine. The hadith, Ba'um al-Mundir bin al-Qais al-Ansariya, this is a hadith quoted by her, the messenger of God came into my room accompanied by, by Hazrat Ali who was then convalescing from conjunctivitis, okay. a condition resulting from excess heat. In the room, we had some dates, um, clusters hanging, which produces a heating effect. The messenger of God got up to eat some of them and so did Hazrat Ali. The messenger of God said to Ali, you are convalescing. Mm -hmm. Then she continued, I made some barley and chard, which has a cooling effect, and brought it. And, and the Prophet said to Ali, take some of this, for it is more beneficial for you. So this concept of balancing qualities to restore homeostasis mm -hmm. is an important principle in prophetic medicine and obviously in Tib. So virtually every hadith now, uh, I only chose one, mm -hmm. but there are so many yeah, of the hadiths yeah and the Quranic ayahs mm. in, in, in the book, which, which emphasizes, which fortifies it, mm. that whole, this whole system of, of, of the two principles of temperament, humor, lifestyle factors, all has got a common thread, and those are the qualities. Our old yeah. people, they didn't know about humors and temperament, but they knew about qualities. Yes. And this is what makes Tib so simple to understand. Yeah. And remember something, our Prophet Wasallam was Rahmatul Alameen. Yeah. He was sent to all mankind. Mm. All mankind, including the average person on the street. Yeah, not just so, as Muslims. So, yes. so, so whatever he is in Tibbun Nabawi yeah. can be understood. In fact, 
I ran a program. I'm going to ask you just to stop just there because I see there's more and more coming. There's so much to learn about the beautiful Prophet's medicine <laughs> and it'll just go on and on. But we need to quickly pay the bills, Prof. We'll come back with more of your questions. Please uh, do call in on Prophetic Medicine just after this. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. A very good evening to you. This is Health Matters on Prophetic Medicine. I'm Hawa Salomon and with me in studio is Professor Bika and Dr. Yakub. Shukran so much uh, to our experts for joining us this evening. And we've got quite a few questions from our viewers. Uh, we are taking your calls too, but please note that if it does take a while for us to answer, just, just hold on a little bit. Please also be away from your television. Your television sets off, uh, sound off. Uh, and that you're on a good uh, connection so we don't have any interference if you want to get your message through and your call and your question through. So firstly, let's quickly go to our first question we have. Salams, I'd like to know, is cupping also from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Absolutely. There's yeah. such a, there are so many hadiths that the Prophet Sallallahu went up on, on, on the journey to Mihraj. Yeah. He stopped and, and he was told by, by a number of different prophets. Yes. I don't know the exact hadiths. Yes, yes. Said, Go back and tell your ummah, yes. cupping 
Cutting is a cure for all illnesses. Alhamdulillah. We've got a caller online. This is Health Matters. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. Wa alaikum assalam, sir. You, you've got a question? Yes. No, my name is Ahmad Adam. Yes, Ahmad. <laughs> a very old friend. The oh, prof knows <laughs> you. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. Assalamu alaikum to Dr. Saab as well. You talk by. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahmad. Alhamdulillah. Nice to see you again. Thank you. I've got two things to say. One, people may not know much about Professor Rashid Bekha. One, we both were students in the 1960s. I was doing science and he was doing pharmacy. Mm. And at that time he told me that the time will come when I'm going to have make generic medicine. In those days, the medicine was controlled by, uh, by uh, companies that you couldn't even get their prices down. Mm. And Rashid had this vision that the medicine that he will produce will be cheaper and they'll be able to benefit the poor. And Alhamdulillah, with his vision, with the had difficulty, he brought the equipment in and he was able to get generic medicine. And today, Alhamdulillah, if you go around the hospitals or whatever, we are still using B tabs, the old B tabs. Shukran so much to you, sir. Okay. Yes. I was uh, a CEO of a hospital here in Yosta, and with his help, he also helped to, to renovate our emergency center. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, is that he was having difficulty to place his trip graduates from UWC. Mm -hmm. And I took the opportunity because the hospital that we had was a very busy traumatic hospital, trauma. And what we had are outpatients, but we didn't have time to look at the holistic care of patients. Mm. So with our local doctors and the TIP doctors, we clubbed them in together. And alhamdulillah, it became a holistic care. Mm. And I was myself surprised as well to see that we should have been doing this all the time. Because the conventional medicine as well as TIP, they can work together. It's a pleasure having you call us. Beautiful bit of history. I'm sure you're a modest man, Prof. And uh, I was going to present that question early on. You know, where did it all come from? But I'm sure that's history and a show on its own. But Alhamdulillah, some beautiful and, and touching words uh, a bit about yourself. I we appreciate that call. So this one is, um, my question is to Prof. Is the evidence that TIB medicine helps cure patients and how long does it take for the TIB medicine to take effect mm -hmm. since Ayurvedic medicine takes very long and sometimes doesn't work? Mm. I think that, that is actually a fallacy mm. because if it is, if, if the medication is, is, is applied or rather is prescribed mm. uh, in, in an appropriate manner, mm. remember TIB medication and most of the herbal medications, that the doses can be can be increased three or fourfold. Mm. Okay, again, they're under supervision. Mm. So this concept that herbal med medication takes take long mm. isn't true because obviously the, 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 the label on the bottle will give you the safest doses. Yes. But for the practitioner, they can increase the, the dose to about four or five times more. Yeah. Okay, so, so that is also a fallacy. Mm. But remember, treatment is not only with medication. Yeah. It's going to be lifestyle involved. Okay. Your diet, because ultimately, according to TIP, all illnesses are caused from the six lakhs perspective that we talk about just now. Yeah. Dr. Yakub, you'd like to comment? No. Okay. Sorry, sorry. So we have um, uh, this uh, Nazim from Cape Town, Shukran for your WhatsApp. He says, please she how Parkinson's disease can be complemented alongside TIP uh, via modern medicine by using prescription medication. And Shukran, he'll watch on television the answer mm -hmm. Parkinson's. So similar to um, what you've mentioned, mm -hmm. Dr. Yacoub. Look, uh, again, yeah, you know, my, uh, my view mm -hmm. on the latest developments of, of conventional Western medicine mm -hmm. over the last 20 years is based on the receptor theory, which unfortunately doesn't address the cause. Yeah. It addresses only the symptoms. Okay. So yes, but, but, but it can be compensated with some of the practices of the prophet. Mm -hmm. now, now, for example, I mean, if you read the book, it talks about 
the Prophet whenever he traveled, mm. had a few things with him, a comb, etc. Plus he had, he had hair oil. Now this is my theory. I might be wrong. Mm. My theory is that uh, hair oil gave the nourishment to the brain. Mm. Okay? Also, you might remember some of our older people, in summer, they used to put coconut oil on their head. Yes. In, in, in winter, they would put olive oil on their head. Mm. Now remember, the temperament of the brain is moist, overall temperament. Now, now I know I'm jumping the gun, <laughs> but anyway, uh, and for electrical activity to be facilitated, mm. that moistness is, is, requirement, mm. is a requirement. So this whole practice of not putting oil on the head, remember the old days we used to put oil regularly? Now, in the old days, most of us lived in very difficult circumstances. We, you know, most of us had, had a shower once a week or twice a week, <laughs> okay? Right? Now, everybody showers every day, every day. puts a, a conditioner and shampoo. Whatever nourishment is available on the, uh, on, on the brain is gone. Away. How much Natural. dementia and all of these things did we have mm. 30 years ago? Almost zero. Mm. So now. Lifestyle link, definitely. I mean, I apply my, my oil every night as a standard thing. Not sure. Because the nourishment of the brain, uh, another concept of, of tip. The nose is the evacuation channel for the brain. Okay. Why do you think when you sneeze, you say, Shukr alhamdulillah. Allah. Bless Allah. Because when you sneeze, it's the evacuation from the brain. Yeah. Right? In the old days, people just snuff. Yes. What was the effect of the snuff? To let them sneeze. To, 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 to let you sneeze. Yeah. Right? So all of these simple practices mm. have been lost, unfortunately. But anyway, so Parkinson's, yes, you can possibly uh, uh, combine some of, some of the practices, mm. like putting oil in But I'm not sure after the damage is done, and yes, remember Parkinson's, yes. damage is done. Has to do consultation. Yeah. So, so, so that, you know, whether it will help as a state, only Allah knows. Okay. Right? Dr. Yakub? Okay, so um, this uh, viewer would like to know, how many times a week did the Prophet Sallallahu used to eat meat or chicken? Uh, I, I vaguely remember there was a hadith mm. that, uh, in fact, Amir, Amir al-Qadi spoke about it. That so often there was not a fire in, in the Prophet yes, home. Yes, okay? yes. And, and this was, uh, again, interpreted that, you know, uh, there was nothing to cook and, and they had more vegetables. Mm. Again, yeah, I'm not sure. But yes, without a doubt, the Prophet Sallallahu I mean, it is said that the mm. prophets had only one meal a day. Yes. This is one of the other hadith that I heard somewhere, whether it's a hadith or, or, or the tradition, I'm not sure. The prophets used to have only one meal a day. Mm. Pious people used to have two meals a day, and people like us, we have our three and four meals a day. <laughs> but it brings back the, the teaching Balance. of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam again, right. whether you, in uh, whatever scenario you have, you must choose the moderate path, the wasata, the middle path. So even answering that question about meat and that, uh, even in Western medicine now, we kind of say to people that they should not have too much of one thing. Mm. So even meat has to be done in moderation and then the different types of meats. I mean, we have conditions like uh, colitis, where we then discourage patients who have the constipation issue to eat too much red meat. Okay. So it's again fitting in with it. So to answer that question, yes, uh, it actually should be done in moderation and it's definitely, I don't think it's a daily thing. Explain moderation. With uh, Sometimes yeah. in, our, yeah. in our community you have to be very specific. <laughs> Yeah. Now, moderation is basically a very simple term. I mean, mm. you don't do things in excess, like we quoted the hadith earlier. Your stomach, half water, half solid, leave the other half. So it's kind of common sense, and Prof used that word. Mm. It's a lot of it is common sense. Okay. If only there's some application of that common sense. So so you're saying, let's do two, three times a week, one vegetarian meal, there's chicken no, like, sometimes. There's strict rules as okay. such, right? But today, you got people that, you see, again, the term dietitian is not a good one, because people think they have to go on a diet. Yeah. But it's rather healthy living with a nutritionist balance. who teach you the balance again. Mm -hmm. And then balance is an overused word in a way sometimes, mm -hmm. but it's what's good for you individually. Yeah. You can't have one recipe for all. Absolutely. You may have a sp specific body type, you may have different Absolutely. temperaments, yes. and like you said, the humors, <laughs> and then you've got your winter and your summer. Mm -hmm. So you've got to incorporate all of that together.
Let's talk a little bit about the book and what what it uh, what it has. I know we've, we've got a minute or two left before the break. If we can quickly uh, break that down, I know we will come back to that. But let's talk a little bit about the book. Who is it aimed at, and why? The, the book is definitely aimed at the average person. Oh, maaf, maaf. Before you answer that, let's just quickly take the caller. This is Health Matters. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Wa alaikum salam. So you have a question. Can I speak to Prof? Yes, you may please. go ahead, Prof. So says, uh, I've been using, I've been using lactic oil for quite a few years, That's and cool. I'm grinding the black seed. Is it advisable? The black seed oil. Sorry. Okay. okay. Is that your question, sir? Yes, yes, Shukran so much so for, it, for that. Is it so advisable is it, to grind the black seed oil? And the brother's it. been using the black seed oil, but he's okay. been grinding it. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, there's a very strong hadith mm -hmm. about black seed. Yes. That it is a cure for all illnesses except death. Except death. And in fact, I mean, Yaku will probably remember, I did the first research and the paper I delivered at IMA mm -hmm. on black seed. Mm -hmm. That is in the 80s. Kulinji. Yes, yeah. Kulinji, also, yeah. also known as Kulanji, uh, soda, Habitobarika. Black seed, again, yeah, and all, every hadith is linked to the temperament of the person. Okay. Now, now black seed is available in, in, in the seed itself. Mm -hmm. It's also available in, 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 a, in a oil, which has been extracted, okay? And uh, again, depending on the temperament of the person, for me, for example, because of my melancholic frame, I cannot have black seed oil. It's too hot for me. So I mix the black okay. seed with honey. So every, every prophetic tradition, there's also this element of link onto the temperament of the person. Mm -hmm. Yes, the hadith is powerful. Of course, you can have it in different forms, either just a few seeds, mm -hmm. either the oil, or mix it with honey. Okay. All of these, these, these extra uh, applications of how to use it mm -hmm. is also linked onto the temperament of the person. Okay. So yes, black seed, I mean the hadith, it, 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 Roughly, ask it about the grinding of it. Look, uh, you could grind it as well. I mean, some people just chew the seeds, yeah. and uh, and, uh, and the grinding they, would apply afterwards. No, no, okay. and then and then having oh, eat it. it. Okay. You know, I mean, if crushed up and have it, it in a ground form, like a yeah. powdery. Okay. So, to eat so it. It, it can be it can be grounded and head and head. It, it can be head just on the seed on its own. Mm -hmm. There are many different. Uh, Interpretation that you should have only seven seeds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. But again, how authentic these interpretations are, I'm not sure. Right. However, it's got to be individualized. The but yes, a very, very strong antioxidant oh, yes, and oh, anti-inflammatory. So it's, those are very good, two very important properties which we have in our Western medicine. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> More on profits medicine just after this. Please do stay with us, taking your calls as well. Back in a moment.
Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. This is Health Matters. Uh, this beautiful month of Rabi'ul Awal, we celebrate the Prophet and its medicine, his medicine, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm Khawa Solomon. With me, Dr. Yaqub and Professor Bika. Literally just a few minutes as we have to run through uh, the last bit of prophetic medicine. But just latching on to what you said about oil and also the Kula, there's been quite a few questions around uh, oil and uh, black seed. Uh, this uh, gentleman said he's almost bald and he heard the Prophet say uh, that you use oil. Um, on your hair every night. Is it good for the head to actually put it on? This of you would like to know? Unfortunately, black seed oil is extremely hot and dry. Okay. So it's not advisable for, for using black seed on the head. Definitely okay. not. You know, as I said, the, the, you know, people in summer used to use coconut oil to maintain the moistness. Okay. And, and, in, uh, and in winter, use olive oil. Mm. So definitely black seed to rub on the oil is a no-no. All right. Black seed oil, is it the same as hemp seed oil? And is it good for, uh, I think it's rosacea? Rosacea. Rosacea. It's a skin condition. It's a skin condition, yeah. yeah. No. Uh, and they also ask, is it the same as hemp? Is it the same? No. Hemp seed oil. Black seed, yeah, the botanical name is Nigella sativa. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, very, yeah, different. Very, very different. Very okay. different, yeah. And the skin uh, issue? Look, uh, again, your yeah, black seed is, is, is extremely hot. Okay. So, so, so any skin problems like urticaria, etc., etc., if, if the underlying cause is excessive heat, okay. it will probably make it worse. Worse, okay. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, Tibbun Nabawi and, and some of the, the main uh, principles around that and uh, also let's encompass some temperaments in there as well, okay. inshallah. Uh, I think, uh, again, a lot more details are in the book. Mm. But the three main concepts are, firstly, the healing comes from, from Allah SWT, okay? And uh, even Kayyum describes this, the innate nature is a power which God, praise be He, has entrusted with the managing, the, with managing the affairs of the body, its preservation and its health, mm. and guarding it for the whole length of time. Hippocrates calls this this medicatic natura, and ultimately, I mean, in the Quran, the verse 2680, when I fall ill, it is who it is He who heals me. Mm. Again, you're highlighting the point that while treatment may come from outside, healing comes from within, and this, in, in, tip, in the tip philosophy we call it physis. Mm. Physis is directly controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And if you go into the book, it tells you physis oversees every aspect of the human being, physical, mental, emotional, etc. Mm. The first concept. Second concept in tip, which is critical, is the concept of temperament. Right? Temperament describes the uniqueness of an individual as a combination of a person's physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual attributes. Mm. Like uh, Sayyuti in his book, the Prophet ﷺ was the best of men in physical appearance and constitution and the best of men in character. Now the concept of temperament is critical in tip because it recognizes the, the individu individuality of a person just as each person has got a distinct fingerprint. Mm. Temperament is the same. Mm. Each person has got a unique temperament. However, Galen uh, described, uh, uh, put a, uh, described temperament in four basic categories. Mm. Sanguinous with, with certain qualities. Mm. You know, linked to hot and moist, phlegmatic, cold and moist, melancholic, cold and dry, and bilious, cold and dry. Mm. And of course, the concept of temperament linked to the dominant quality. Like if you look at the slide here, sanguine is hot and moist, phlegmatic is cold and moist. So the common quality there is moistness. Yes. Now, uh, this, this allows you to, mm. allow the tip practitioner to target a lifestyle program linked onto the person's temperament. Mm. Now if you look at the next slide, which is linked to lifestyle factors, again here, yeah, according to tip, there are six lifestyle factors that affect every single person, mm. okay? It's, it's environmental and breathing, food and drink, movement and rest, emotion and feeling, sleep and, and wakefulness and elimination. Mm. And all of these six lifestyle factors also have got certain qualitative effects. For example, the air, the weather is either hot, cold, moist or dry. Mm. Take food and drink, ginger is heating, watermelon is cooling. Take movement and rest, exercise produces heat. Mm. So, uh, I mean, they take emotions if you get angry, if you blow a fuse, you get hot, okay? So all the lifestyle factors has also got certain qualitative effects. So ultimately, you can marry now 
the lifestyle factors in relation to the temperament of the person mm. based on qualities. Okay, so this gives you that individualized target approach of, of making sure your, your, your lifestyle factors are to suit you. Absolutely. Okay. And this evaluative is unique because it's the only system, I've studied all the systems. Yes, uh, Chinese have got yin and yang, yeah. Ayurveda has got the three doshas, but nothing brings everything together, together. like the unfortunately. And no, like the alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. And of course, praise to, praise to, to you know, even Sina, Galen, and of course, obviously, it all comes directly. Uh, absolutely, from the above. Uh, yeah. uh, Dr. Yaakov, we need to wrap up. Um, I understand that uh, this is a very intense uh, topic and there's so much more to discuss. But in your last words and concluding comments on, on TIB and the, the, the manners, you know, it can be, you know, possibly included in lifestyle in medicine. So I think earlier we mentioned common sense, but at the same time, the actual science of TIB mm. and the different understanding the different humors and the principles, that cannot just be taken off from anywhere. Yeah. It has to be studied, mm. and then obviously it has to be taught properly and then practiced. And how the integration will work with Western medicine or any other branch of medicine mm. that you work with has to be done under supervision with experts, and then you gain the experience as we go along. But there's no doubt that the healing properties taught to us by the Prophet mm. and mm. the mm. principles that is brought about is from Allah, and it has full of barakah, mm. and we must just have faith in it, and there shouldn't be any problem. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah to you, Dr. Yakuba. Yeah. We hope to see you back on Health Matters soon. Yeah, He's you. just going to take a little bit of a break. So all the best with your travels. But from you, uh, Professor Beaker, we uh, we we know endless uh, results uh, when it comes to uh, the beautiful medicine of the Prophet, which is available on your website, www.tib.co.za. You've mentioned that this book is downloadable on your website as well. And uh, again, your, your last message, uh, concluding comments, or rather for tonight, inshallah. On this, on this particular segment, and, and interesting what, uh, what Yaka mentioned, mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate that, you know, we've got our clinic running in Cape Town. Yes. And alhamdulillah, I mean, our, our clinic in South Department sees more than a thousand patients a month. Alhamdulillah. So alhamdulillah, over the last 10 years, we've done a lot of research mm -hmm. in validating the theoretical principles of the temperamental and immoral theory. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm pleased to, 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 to mention that, that those, those initial principles hypothesized by Hippocrates and Galen and even mm -hmm. Sena, we've now, uh, we've now added value by research mm -hmm. proving that those principles are valid. And, and, and it can stand up to, can stand up to scrutiny mm -hmm. with anybody. MashaAllah, beautiful words. And we appreciate again your time as well as you, Dr. Yaqub. All the best till we chat again. Assalamu alaikum to you, Doc. And to you as well. Yeah. And from myself, uh, remember this beautiful book, uh, Medicine of the Prophet, is available on www.tib.co.za and all the advice you want with regards to TIB Medicine also on that website. Join us next week as we chat about the 16 days of activism with Dr. Shaida Omar. Wassalamu alaikum and goodbye for now.